Hi, Gavin Furlong with Home Theater Solutions here. Going to do a demo today on the Control 4 My Home app. Uh, will be a good video for those clients of ours who may be thinking of making the switch into the Control 4 home automation system or prospective clients who are considering Control 4. We'll go over some of the major features of the system today uh, and specifically how you can control just about every aspect of your home from an iPad, an iPhone, or an Android device. So to start here, I'm going to go back to the home screen. Control 4 My Home App is this 4 button here that I have in the corner. So I'll go ahead and press that. I have this um, iPad working inside my own home at the moment, but we can configure this app to work from outside the home. So if you're on the road or at the office and need to control a particular system in your home, turn lights on and off, adjust the thermostat, you, uh, you, we can certainly configure that for you and, and uh, you can do that. When the app loads up, you're going to see it's got a room name at the top. That's the room that I'm currently set up to control, which uh, in my case is the TV room. But if you have more than one room's worth of equipment or systems tied into the Control 4 system, if I press TV room there, you're going to see a list of rooms. And these are all the rooms in my house that have um, basically automation features built in. You can see it, see it switch there to office. Since we're in the TV room, I'll put it back on TV room. And two of the main buttons at the top, watch and listen. This will be uh, will look familiar to clients of ours who have Control 4 now but may not be using the My Home app. This is a very similar layout to the SR250 remote that comes with the Control 4 system. You can see we have a watch button and a listen button at the top. Watch will be all of your video sources that have a picture involved, so Fios, cable, satellite, Blu-ray, for example. On the listen side will be your audio only sources, tuner, CD player, iPod, for example. And it works the same way here. So if I press watch, down at the bottom I'm going to get a list of the available video sources for the room that I'm currently controlling. And I want to turn this room on to the DVR. So I've got a few more uh, devices here that are off to the side of the screen. So let me just swipe that over. I'm going to select DVR. And you may have heard the TV click on in the background, um, but also you can see that we have a set of buttons here. Essentially all the controls I need to manage my DVR box. Channel up and down, menu, cancel, guide, the PVR, DVR button, fast forward, rewind, record, stop, arrow keys with a select in the middle. All the buttons that you would find on your typical universal remote or maybe the, if you use the remote that came with your cable, satellite, or Fios box. I can also swipe this to the side there. There's a number pad where I can individually key in a station number. I'll slide back here. You can see we've got the uh, TV fired up over there to ESPN. And just to show you quickly, I'll go ahead and use this channel up and down button here. And you can see the channel changing there. So all the controls I need for my DVR box are right here available to me on the iPad. If I want to switch sources, let's say I want to do a different activity, all I have to do is select it on the bottom line here. So let's say I want to go to the Blu-ray player, which is right there. I'll go ahead and select it. And you can see that my buttons up top have changed. Um, the app is only going to give me the controls I need for the device that I'm using. So I still have my arrow keys to move around the menu, select, menu, cancel, info, fast forward, rewind, all that good stuff. And you can see, I don't believe I have a disc in there, but you can see the Blu-ray logo for the, for the Sony Blu-ray player. Volume control is easily accessible for you right here on the bottom. We've got an up and a down and a mute next to it. Press it once, it mutes, press it again, it goes off. There's also a power button to the side, which will turn off the room that we're currently controlling. I'll go ahead and press that. This is a feature you can turn on and off. You can see it gave me a pop-up there, uh, just a confirmation page to make sure you didn't accidentally hit the power off button. It's asking, do I really want to turn off the TV room? And yes, I do. So I'll hit yes. And you can see that my TV has gone blank over there. And my... Controls for the Blu-ray have gone away. I'm back to the main Control 4 screen here. So while we're here to show you a few other features, let's go into HVAC. In order to add your uh, HVAC system to the Control 4 system, we take down your existing thermostat. We put a Control 4 thermostat in its place. It's quick and easy. It's all wireless, no wires to pull. What we see here is the current temperature in the house, 76. 
You can see my cool and my heat set points. Cool is set to 78, so when the inside temperature gets above 78, the AC will turn on. Heat is set to 70, same thing in reverse. When the temperature gets below 70, the heat will turn on. I can control the mode here, cool, heat, auto, which will use whatever um, aspect of the HVAC system it needs, heating or cooling, or you can turn the system fully off. I also have fan control here. It's set to auto. auto. I could turn it to on or off manually as well. And you can have more than one thermostat. I have one showing here. It's not actually controllable. It's just giving me the temperature in my garage, which is currently 70 degrees. But if your home has, let's say, an upstairs and a downstairs thermostat, we can tie both floors into the control four system. We would just need two of the wireless thermostats. We'll replace the, the two that you have existing. So I'll press this back button here to go back to the main control four page, show you a few more things. Let's go into lighting control. Lighting is just as easy as the thermostat. We, uh, in the case of the lighting, we take out your existing switch or dimmer and we put a control four switch or dimmer in its place. And then you can go ahead and uh, control that lighting circuit through the iPad app through your remotes inside or outside the home. So I've just got one lighting circuit associated with my TV room. I'm going to go ahead and press the all lights button here on the side. What that's going to do is show me all the lighting loads that are tied into my control floor system. And I have a few more showing here and I can just swipe through them there to get through the list. And let me find one for you that's closest. Okay, so these recessed lights that I have here in the kitchen, if I go ahead and press that, you'll see the lights come on. If I press it again, you'll see the lights go off, they dim down. And I'm toggling it on and off just by pressing the little light bulb there. The other thing I can do is just grab this slider and pull it to the side there. And as you see, as I move that slider, it controls the setting on the dimmer. Very handy when you're outside the house, want to check to see if you may have left some lights on or the kids left some lights on in their room, whatever it may be, you can turn it off from anywhere you have a data connection. So we'll go back again. Show you the security feature. If you have an existing alarm panel, we can go ahead and integrate with that. We can tie in. And what that will allow you to do is, just like you have an alarm keypad on the wall, probably at your main entry door, maybe in your master bedroom, um, you'll get an alarm keypad here. So you can arm the system, disarm the system. If there's any trouble codes, uh, doors open, you can go ahead and view that. I know what my trouble code is, if you can see the trouble text there. Let's see. I haven't set the date right, so that's what it always tells me to do. Please program time and date. So um, <laughs> I'll get around to that later. But um, also, like we meant, like I mentioned, if you had a window or a door open, any trouble text would appear on, on the screen here. Whatever you see on your alarm keypad, you can also view through this app. One more feature for you, also under security, we can tie in door locks, uh, access control features. For example, I have our alarm, or I'm sorry, our uh, garage door tied in here. You can see the little icon there that's showing me that the garage is currently closed. If I go ahead and press that, don't know if you can hear that in the distance, but the garage door is opening and you can see the door now shows that it's open. Same thing works in reverse. As soon as that's, I hear the motor stop, I'll go ahead and shut it. Shut the door back down and once it's complete, once the door is fully shut, the icon will change there and it'll show us that the door is closed. Um, but along with the garage door, we can also control deadbolts, uh, door handles, other means of access from the outside. Let's say you have a service person or a cleaning lady or family coming before your home. Uh, with these type of automation features, you can disarm the home's alarm and uh, provide them entry even uh, with you not being there. So just a few of the major bullet points on the Control 4 system. Lots of other features that um, we can use to uh, make your life a little bit easier and give you um, a nice, clean, and easy-to-use control interface for just about every aspect of your home. If you have any questions, please certainly contact us, and we'd uh, be happy to talk to you a little bit more about Control 4. Thank you very much.